Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and Goodreads as Bookish Stitcher, all in word. I hope you've had a wonderful week since I last podcasted. It has been this time of year, and I can look outside and see them right now. This time of year is just kind of magical. In San Antonio, I don't know if other parts of Texas, probably, but so all the butterflies, monarchs especially, are migrating down from the upper parts of Canada, or from Canada and the upper parts of the United States, and they're on their way to Mexico, and they come through Texas, and San Antonio is obviously fairly close to Mexico in the grand scheme of things, and so the air for the past several days has just been covered in butterflies making this journey down, and it's just the most beautiful thing to behold, and I've just loved seeing every day. I do wish that it, there was a ban on driving while the butterflies were migrating southward because I always get so sad when you're driving and the butterf and the butterflies hit your car. I just I want you know them all to make it safely down to Mexico. But I was watching a really interesting documentary this week. If anybody is interested, called "The Flight of the Butterflies" and it is on Netflix. It was about this Canadian scientist and his wife I, who kind of dedicated their lives to studying the monarch butterfly and, you know, finding out where they went during the winter time and amazing, very, like a very quiet, soft, simple film. It's under an hour. There's no action or anything. It's just a very sweet story of this man and his wife and then this couple in Mexico who helped them find out where all the butter, all the monarchs were going because they had no idea. And I believe he won some award in Canada for his work with the monarchs. And it's just been beautiful seeing them all flying through the sky. And you could go out in your front yard and just stand there and there's butterflies just flying all around you. And it's it's amazing. So yeah, it's been a very magical week and I know that their journey is grinding down because every day there are fewer and fewer coming through, but it's just been beautiful to see them and I feel very lucky to live somewhere where all the butterflies come through and I get to actually see this leg of their enormously long journey. But this is a knitting podcast, so let me get into the knitting part. I have two finished objects this week. The ends aren't sewn in on this one, but these are the Saki Toe Slippers. There's some lint on them. <laughs> but these are the Saki Toe Slippers by Nell, Nell Knits. And I was almost done last week. I just had to finish up. And these are going to be a Christmas present for my mom's husband. And I hope he likes them. I just have to sew this part over so it creates like a loop so that he can get it on and off fairly simply. So it's a Christmas present done, and he wears a size, men's size 13, so these go up to size 11 to 14, so they should fit him fairly well. And I did these out of some Knit Picks Bravo, which is 100% acrylic, because I wanted them to be simple care for him. He can throw them in the washing machine, he can throw them in the dryer. It should be pretty long wearing because of the acrylic, it shouldn't wear holes in it, and it was knit at a pretty dense gauge, so that will help with that too. And I'm definitely going to be knitting some of these for myself or my mom and other people in the future because it's a pretty fast pattern for just a quick gift. And I, I failed so much at the cast on something new every day of the month of September. I'm just discovering that for me, it's like too many whips. So what I would do is I would finish up one of my older ones and so this was one of my older whips that I had. And then I would go and cast on a new one. So the next thing I cast on after I finished those was something that I love the little quick knits that you can finish really fast. So this is for Nitty Girl 78. And it's another part of the little baby gift package that I'm putting together for her. I'm really good at knitting baby gifts. I need to remember to mail things out because I'm not so great at mailing. But this is a woolly worm head hat. And I have her book, Bam Bambinis. It's a book of different baby and kid hat patterns. And I think I've almost knit everything in there. And this is some leftovers of another crafty girl in two different colors. I don't remember right now. But the hat's really cute. And it has these little eye cords that come out. There are four of them. 
and they are very securely fastened in so that they will be okay for the baby. And I'm not making it for a tiny, tiny baby because I know when you have baby showers and stuff when you're pregnant, a lot of people give you the smaller size stuff because they're super cute, the tiny little things. So I made it a little bit bigger. And I also know that her baby is due end of September, beginning of October. So I wanted it to be stuff that could last through March. So this is a little bit more of a winter, like January to March, a little winter hat. So that is gonna match with the baby Uggs that I made. So two little part of that. And then, since I had finished that, I picked up something else that was in my, I had already been working on it and wanted to knit, except it's not knitting. I picked up my crochet hat that I've been working on. And this was originally going to go for the Hats for Grammys charity cow, but I didn't get it done in time, but it fits my daughter and she loves it, so it's going to be for her. And this is in a Tangled Skein CA bag my friend Sue made, and I bought this from her at Rhinebeck last year. I bought two of her bags. This one kind of says fall to me. So in here, take it off the crochet hook because I'm afraid of that getting dropped. Pull the little loop. There you go. But this is just, it's, I'm not following a pattern, really I'm just double crocheting, and I'm just going to go till I run out of yarn. And this is some Dream Baby DK, I think, not exactly sure about that, but it's a very cute pattern, and I'm liking crocheting. I actually did crochet while we were out this weekend at a restaurant, and we went out for breakfast and I was, it felt a little weird to be crocheting in public. I, I knit in public, but I've never crocheted in public, so it felt a little odd. But I did it and I didn't drop any stitches or anything. And that's the thing I love about crochet, that I could just go to the end of this ball and I don't even have to worry about it because I think there's just going to be one stitch to bind off, so you don't have to worry about having enough to bind off. You just keep going. And my daughter really likes this hat and it fits her pretty well. So I have... A good bit of yarn left but that's what I'm going to try to finish next because I want to not just cast on new things because then I at the end of September I'd have like 38 whips or 36 whips because I'd have the ones from previously before September and then I'd have the new ones that I started and that would be for me I've never had over eight or ten I might have over that now <laughs> but I've, I've never had that many on the needle so I, I can't imagine I, I would in my in theory I would love to be able to have that many because that means you could cast on that many but it would for me personally I would be stressed out so that is my crochet hat I'm gonna have a little bit of my tea here I got um I got this forever ago but it's really good for headaches and so I've been drinking that a lot this weekend it's called bad bromance and the company is called Tea Leaf. It says it's for after the party, but I haven't gone to any parties this weekend other than the wake up at 3 a.m. not feeling well with a headache party, so I've just been drinking the tea. And oh, it's still super hot. I'm just staying and reading tons of books this week. That's been mainly what I've been wanting to do is just read. Because Texas hasn't realized that it's fall yet. It's still getting up to almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit here, which is about 30 degrees Celsius every day. <laughs> so the butterflies are staying nice and warm. They don't, they're definitely, you know, warm enough on their journey down. But it, it's just, I'm really wanting the colder weather so I can feel a surge for my knitting. But I, the weather hasn't cooperated yet. And then... But I do have my fall bags out, so this is one of my favorite ba fall bags, my, maybe my only fall bag, but this hat is from a bird leg, bird leg bags, and it has a little owl, because I love owls as a bead. I mean, that's so cute. But look, there's a little turtle, and it has an apple on his back, and a little owl. I'm not super in love with turtles, but I am super in love with owls, so... But, and that the apple on its back just makes it so cute. But it's, it's just so perfectly fall. Look at those colors. 
a little carabiner. I got this bag forever ago. So I don't, she probably wouldn't have this fabric anymore, but you know, there are tons of different fall fabrics out that people have. And so this is another thing that I am making for knit, Knitty Girl or Knit Girly 78. I don't know if I'm getting her route or, or uh, her Instagram name wrong, but I have wanted to knit this pattern for a while and I thought this was the perfect time. So this is some yarn that my friend Katie was doing in the giveaway that I picked up and it's three Irish girls in her Kells Sport Merino, which is 100% Merino, 330 yards in the colorway Zephyr. And the pattern that I'm knitting is by Isolde Teague and it is We Envelope. And according to the pattern, she she wrote this pattern to be a sweater that you could knit in a day for a newborn. Now I'm not knitting the newborn size, but I didn't knit a sweater in a day. It's kind of really silly the amount of knitting that I did not get done just because reading, you know, books, the wonderful world of books, but it's looking super cute. Look at that. It's a little sleeve. Aw, babies. So cute. And so fast to knit for. And it's really, it's it's a nice, like, it's not super, super soft, but it's kind of soft. And I think it'll wear pretty well. And so the wee envelope has this really neat construction. And I'm really excited to knit up the pattern and see how it all works out. And... I think it's going to be an adorable baby sweater and I think this yarn is going to work really well for it because it has this subtle variegation but it's all different blues. But it's the cutest, one of the cutest baby patterns. I definitely encourage you if you need a baby knit to go check out Wee Envelope. And apparently if you need a baby gift super fast you can knit it in a day. But not, not me. Not the bigger size. So hopefully, I mean, I think... If I were at a retreat or something and didn't have, you know, or if I had a car that drove me, like one of those self-driving cars, because I think that that's most of what I spend my days doing now is just driving. But if I had a self-driving car, I could probably get it done in a day. That's what I need, a self-driving car so I can knit instead of, I can get through like a six-hour audiobook in two days, sometimes even one day. which tells you how much driving and carpool pickup lines with the two kids in school now for parts of the day. So yeah, I love that bag. And then the last thing I cast on, this pattern was actually a gift to me from my friend Brenda, who is a good yarn. She gifted it to me for my birthday this year. And it is the Green Apple Little Girl Sweater Dress by Monica Serenon. Sierra, Sierna, Sierna, Monica Sierna, and I am using, this is my On the Dock Knits bag, it's so cute, all the wonderful trees, and I use this for all my daughter's sweaters, because it's such a little whimsical girl, little girl pattern, if you could see that, yes, haha, -ha. and then this, the yarn that I'm using is some of my oldest yarn, and it is another crafty girl, these pinks and browns, and there's some little bits of black in there too. And the green apple is this really cute dress. That's what it looks caked up. So I'm almost done with the front part. And then I have to, you know, knit the back straps and join it all together in the round. But I'm doing a bigger size than my daughter needs because I want it to be like a really large dress and that she can wear for a long time and then transition into a tunic. And that's the wonderful thing about this pattern is if you make it longer for the child's age, it has about two to four inches of positive ease built into it. And so it grows with them. So if it starts out a dress for a three-year-old, for the five-year-old, it could be a tunic. And it's a great layering piece because it's short sleeves and you can just put a long sleeve over it and they can wear tights. It's a very cute pattern. Some people have done amazingly original, adorable things with this pattern like embroidery on the pockets and just the cutest things. So if you ever need a little girl dress, I would definitely go check this out. But it's a garter stitch up top and it's just going really well. For the size that I'm making, I don't have enough yarn for it, but I do have some pink tweed left over from when I knit my daughter a sweater last year. So I think that that might go. I could do 
this yarn for the garter stitch parts and then do the pink tweed for the main for the little bit of the body that's in stockinette and then the bottom band of garter stitch could be in this yarn again but yeah it's just a very fun girly color and I absolutely love another crafty girls worsted it's one of my favorite worsted weight yarns and this is like my last yarn of hers I think I might have this is I know I don't have any more worsted weight I might have a skein of sock yarn not sure though but yeah I don't have a lot of her yarn left I know I have some minis from her that's what I have but it's great to knit with it's just so squishy and her colors are adorably fun so those are my three whips that I kind of worked on the most I worked a little bit on other things because like I said I as soon as I would cast on something new I'd be like I need to go work on my other whips because I can't just leave them lying around it's so good but it's so hot but I didn't want to just lie, leave them lying around so I tried to pick the thing that was like the closest to being done that could conceivably be done relatively quickly like the crochet beanie and stuff like that so I'm excited to cast on new things but I'm not hardcore like my friends that can do a new thing every day I just I love the idea of it because think of like you're using all your project bags you're casting on all these patterns that you wanted to do but the thought of like when September is over and it's October 1st and you have like I said 36 38 whips I'm just like oh gosh I I don't I don't know if I could do it if I if I had unlimited knitting time during the day where I could just knit eight to ten hours a day then I would definitely probably be better with it because I could get most of the project done like I could have finished that baby sweater I have this in my David's tea nothing which is not really cold enough for tea right now but I don't care I'm ignoring Texas and so spinning. I worked a ton on spinning this week, but it's not done. I'm sorry, Amy. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, because chain plying, I have not done it that much. And I'm not, since I'm not experienced in that, and I think even if I had more experience, chain plying just requires more attention than a simple two ply. Because two ply, you're just going. You're holding the yarn, you're going. Chain plying, you're creating these chains as you go, and you have to like watch and make sure. That, or I, I at least watch and make sure, am I coming to a thin part in the yarn? Is it, you know, make sure it doesn't break, kind of keep it all going with that. And I want it to look nice, and I don't want to rush it and give Amy a yucky yarn. So it will be to you soon, Amy. It could be just like all of September is your birthday. So it will be there before the end of September. But I, I worked several hours on it, and I was working on it basically every night because I cannot work with it, work on it when my kids are home because, or awake, they're always home, but except when they're at school, but <laughs> I'm dying during the day, I'm dying yarn. But so at night I've been working on the chain plying and it's just not done yet, but it will be soon. And it's turning out gorgeously. I did lose a little over a yard because I try, I was like, oh, I can chain ply in the evenings when my family's all around and that didn't work. That's when I discovered that I need to do it after bedtime because <laughs> I, I lost. I had to rip it off a chunk because it just wasn't, it wasn't working. But that's spinning. And for group news, we have a ton of giveaways going on in the group right now for the Book of Stitcher podcast. And you can go over there to check out any of the ones that you would like to. Uh, all I ask is that you please be a member of the group to enter for those or to win at least. Um, and then Stitches Texas is coming up next weekend and I'll be there. And I hope to see some of you. that will be lovely to see some friends. And it's nice that there are so many things in Texas that are within driving distance like not days of driving just a little like depending on traffic three hours or more if traffic is really bad but you know it's drivable and then yarn update I'm off I'm basically done with all the custom orders I have to have some little things made for them which are gonna be really cute and those of you that got the tweed have already seen them but the tweed yarn it's sold out so fast I couldn't believe it but there is more tweed coming because I got contacted by so many people that were you know oh it sold out or I, I forgot about it or didn't get to it till it was sold out and so I will be dying up some more this week so Wednesday at 12 
p.m. Central Time, there will be the last final Les Mis update. There will be some silk, and then I wanted to try dyeing some of the colorways on a different base, and I love singles, as you guys know. I just, they're so wonderful for shawls, cowls, hats, anything that doesn't get a lot of friction, a single is amazing for. You could, you can knit a single with anything, but just be, you know, just know that if you knit a single sweater, you're going to get lots of pills, so it's just kind of like, you can knit anything you want, but certain things will yield better results, let's say, or longer lasting, but I really wanted to dye some of the colorways on singles because I love the bounce of singles, I love the softness, and I am looking at the end of the day, at the end of the day colorway over there in singles. Turned out gorgeously. And I'm sure you guys know this, or probably to me it's just common sense, but when you dye a yarn color on a different base, even if it's like going from a lower silk content to a higher silk content, the color looks different. So like you do the colorway, A Little Fall of Rain, which is one of the ones I did. And when I originally dyed it, it was on a 70-30 merino, merino silk. Then when I did it on a 50-50 merino silk, it looks a little bit different. And when I did it on the twist sock that some people ordered, it looks a little different. The twist, the high twist sock, takes the color a little darker. So it's been fun seeing how these colors dye up on the single ply yarn because it's, it's just fun experimenting with color. <laughs> And then I actually placed the order for the yarn for the next collection and that was so nerve-wracking because I had been saving up almost like 80-90% of the money that I made from the Etsy updates to buy yarn for the next update. So that's I guess how it goes. You sell the yarn then you buy more yarn to sell more yarn. But so I bought that and the, the box is huge and I'm a little bit intimidated right now thinking about like what have you done? You just bought so much yarn to dye up, and this is the next theme is even bigger than the previous one. Uh, I I must be crazy, but I I'm excited about it. I wouldn't. The reason why I'm doing this big, huge theme, the next one, which you'll find out in October, is because I love this. But I love the next theme so much. And so yeah, uh, the Les Mis Singles and Silks will be on Wednesday at noon, 12 p.m. Central. The Tweed Yarns, I will be dyeing all the same colors. Those will be Thursday at 12 p.m. Central, so those two times. And they will all be ready to go out, all dyed up, ready to go out. And I'm not going to have any more of the Fall Skies custom orders until October, because those are very labor-intensive that has several several colors and has to be dyed several several times and then the it takes days and days to do those so they're very there are a lot of commit, time commitments so I'm just not going to have any more of those till October oh and on the notes people have been asking me about my yarn being entered into Ravelry I went to the link to go and add the yarns to Ravelry for Open Skies yarn and Bob showed up some of you may know what was what it means on Ravelry, but if you go to a link and the link is broken, Bob will show up and go, uh-oh, thing, this link is broken. We've contacted Casey. So the link on my page to be a yarn dyer is broken, which is kind of funny <laughs> in a tragic way, but so it should be fixed soon. I But I know that Casey probably has thousands of things to fix, so I don't know how long that will take. I don't know if any of you know Casey personally. And can like put in a good word <laughs> work for me no but I just I don't know how long it will take and I'm really sorry because I I know a lot of people really want to enter their yarns I, I completely understand that I like to keep track of my stash on Ravelry and I really would love to have it up there so I could see the projects that you guys are making but I don't know what else to do I've tried the link several times and it's always still broken I've written to them asking for help and I haven't got any responses back and it's been a week so if anybody has any suggestions for me on how to get that fixed, I would love to know. But now on to enabling. My sweet friend Gabby has become a yarn dyer full-time. She quit her other job and she became a yarn dyer full-time. So I wanted to support her by getting one of her skeins because they're awesome and everything she does is amazing. And she is a once upon a corgi and we both love corgis, so just so cute. And this is her Nia 
think I'm saying that right, Nia colorway, and it's on her penny base, which is an 80-10-10 merino cashmere nylon. Super soft and squishy. And it's just this gorgeous Halloween color, and I already have a shawl picked out for it that I would like to do if I can get enough stuff off the needles to feel okay at casting on something new. But yeah, it's, it's very fun. Gray, green, and purple, which and speckles of black, which are wonderful colors. So thank you, Gabby, and I wish you great success with being a full-time yarn dyer, and your stuff is amazing. She was saying that she had, she'd only done 19 skeins in one day, and I, I, I think that's pretty awesome. If I, I had one day where I got six skeins done in a day, and I was like, I'm the boss. But that I haven't had a day where I got that many done, so it's like two a day, but I don't have that many pots and pans, so I'm sure that Gabby has more than that. Then, in the mail, I received the sweetest package from my friend Brenda. She sent some teas. And then, I'm going to save the best for last. She sent some stitch markers. They're very cute and sparkly, and I love these kind of stitch markers because they never snag, which is always nice. And then, Brenda, did you, I couldn't find in the card, did you make this bag? Look, isn't that cute? It's very almost Parisian. It says it has a violinist and paper. It's like a vintage newspaper print kind of. And it has a little, oh, it has a little Victorian style boot. It is so shiny, but it's so cute. And it has these wonderful polka dots inside. And the bag has this really nice, sturdy kind of, I guess, vinyl or faux leather on it. And I think that'll hold up really nice. But thank you so much, Brenda. I think she must have made it because, yeah, but I couldn't find in the cart if she had made it. And then I have Brenda hand spun. Yay. She was so sweet because she sent some for a giveaway. And she was like, said how, that since I loved it so much, she wanted to send me some. And Brenda is amazing amazing she's on instagram as desert homemaker and her spinning is gorgeous so where is that look at that oh my husband's probably gonna want socks in this and i'm gonna say no no i would let him but oh it's just so pretty and it would be perfect for socks for him actually because this is hand spun by brenda fiber malabrigo noob 100 percent merino wool and then the colorway is Persia, and it is fingering to a light fingering. And out of 3.5 ounces of a three-ply, Brenda got 521 yards of amazingness. Brenda, you are so awesome. I can't... If I got, like, 300 yards out of a three-ply, I'd be happy. But look at that. Oh, she's just so amazing. So pretty. Thank you, Brenda. I love it. And I, I'm keeping this one. Yay! <laughs> so that is all the enabling. It was such a sweet package that she sent me. And I know she's going some more. When is that? Knit City? When does that start? It's up in Canada, but I know she's going to that. So I hope you have an awesome fun time at that, Brenda. It might be in October. I'm not, I'm not sure right now. But anyways, for the book this week, I talked about this book a few weeks ago saying just that I was reading it. I didn't really review it. So I finished it and I'm going to review it. So this book is The Fates and Furies, a novel by Lauren Groff. And I picked this up because it was part of the tournament of books where different books go head to head against each other and people read them. And then the best one, as deemed by those people, the best novel advances to the next round. So I was trying to read through the entire list of the tournament, tournament of book books. I failed. As evidenced by, the tournament of books was early in the beginning of this year, and it's now September, and I'm just finishing this one. But, you know, it's still fun to read. So this book, I, I would say get from your library, because I... I gave it a three stars on Goodreads. It's the story of a marriage. 
And the whole premise of this is that every marriage has two sides, every marriage has secrets. And so it has the male character, Lotto, who is a failed act, who comes from a very wealthy family and always privileged white upper class. And he wants to be an actor, failed at acting, and becomes a playwright. And then his wife, Mathilde, he calls her M, she, her part of the story is the second half. And it kind of gives her side. And there's some very unlikable things about both of these characters. So he has, there's a lot of sex stuff in here, which I don't really like in books at all. But he has, he has quite a relationship with women. He likes to charm them. He is faithful once he gets married, though. But still kind of, I don't know. And then she, she's just, by the end I didn't know whether she was a good person that had done some bad stuff or if she was a sociopath or, I don't know, I'm not going to give anything away really or more than that, but it, it definitely is just, it, by about three, four, of the way through, I was like, I don't like this book. I, I really want this to be over. And then kind of as it kept going and it delved a little deeper into her story, and it kind of starts explaining a little more things, and there's sexual stuff in her story too, which I, that's just not something I enjoy reading about. Um, so that part was hard to read and kind of gross. And this isn't like nice, like, good relation like, I'm not even gonna just it's just yeah there's some not blah stuff and so but as it kind of goes on you kind of each of the characters seen through the other's eyes the other the other person in the marriage like the husband sees the wife as this saint and the wife sees the husband as like this beacon of cheer and light and innocence and so it's kind of beauty through the beholder's eye and that that part's really special and sweet but just the characters themselves I'm not sure and I have a hard time with books where the characters aren't really likable <laughs> but I think it would be a good one to rent from the library and I think that you know is it the plot twists they're kind of plot twists they're not super big but I wasn't really surprised by them but I think that, you know, there are definitely some people that would like this. It's every story has two sides. Every relationship has two perspectives. And sometimes the key to a great marriage is not in its truths, but in its secrets. And this book won a whole bunch of, or got a whole bunch of praise from uh, different people. So this is The Fates and the Furies by Lauren Groff. And I'm still working my way through the other books on the list of the tournament of books. I think I've done about half. So I don't even think I'll finish this year, but it's fun to kind of, maybe I'll make it a goal to have them done before the next tournament of books list comes out. So that's a fun thing to kind of follow if you love books and love, you know, knowing about what's going on in the book world. I believe that's every late winter, early spring, but it's just been fun to kind of do that. So that was my book that I finished up this week, along with a ton of other books. I finished a book in a day. It was a graphic novel, but it was just so amazing to be reading a graphic novel because I love the artistry that is presented in those and how this, the beauty of the pictures just kind of helps carry the story along. And I think that's something that the graphic novel, just that genre, that style of writing just grabs me because I love the art. And the one that I read is called... This one summer and it had a beautiful color palette to the to the drawings that just kind of added this extra element and it was really good so that was almost a book that I reviewed today but I decided to review this one instead but if you like graphic novels uh, it's called this one summer and I believe it's kind of a teen fiction book but yeah that's all I have for this week I hope you have a wonderful week and that you get to do all the things you love okay bye guys